Luke chapter 1, take your Bibles if you don't mind, Luke chapter 1, and uh, that's where we're going to be, Luke chapter 1, and verse number 1 through verse number 4, and uh, Mark Burnley, Mark where you at man, where you at? Raise your hand right there. It's his birthday, and he wanted me to uh, let everybody know it's his birthday. And let's give him a hand if you don't mind. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Luke 1, verse number 1. Let's all stand. And Luke chapter 1, verse number 1. And then when you find that, if you'll stand, and uh, even if you don't find it, go ahead and stand. And uh, glad that you are here this morning. I am excited about tonight's sermon. I do want you to be back. Um, I'm going to preach uncomforting words about temptation. It seems like that, and, and, and I have my sermons prepared weeks in advance, and I know what I'm going to be preaching on the next couple of Sundays, and it's, it's amazing to me. It truly is amazing how that people's lives, uh, that when they enter into a season of just struggles, questions, not really sure what to do about certain situations, how God gives the preacher... Uh, something to preach on that go that fits right with it and I really believe it's one of those kind of sermons tonight so I want you to be here but I still want you to stay for this morning if I had my choice between if I wanted you to hear this sermon or tonight's sermon you know what my choice would be both and uh, so glad you're here mom is that you Mrs. Koenig it's mama good to have you this morning church has not been the same we had to shut it down for weeks because you weren't here Yep, so now you're back. Now we've got to get back to work. So Luke chapter 1, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also. I want you to take note of that word also. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. When I came across this verse several months ago, this section of verses, it was at a time when I felt like that maybe I was being redundant. Maybe that uh, church and Sunday school and all the preaching, I, got, I looked at the repertoire of sermons, thinking about all the sermons that you all have learned and heard throughout the years, and I thought to myself, boy, this is getting to be redundant. And then I came across these set of verses that encouraged me greatly, and I want to encourage you today, preach on this subject, one more voice, one more voice voice. I don't believe that any one single voice makes you or I. I believe it's a multitude of voices that we hear throughout our life. And on our journey, you probably could make a list of voices, make a list of people that they said the right thing at the right time, which made the right difference in your life. If God used somebody to do that in your life, then listen to me, God wants to use you to do that in somebody else's life. Do not discount what God has done with you. One more voice and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I know what you did in my spirit with this set of verses. And Lord, I want to be able to articulate that to your people today. God, sitting before us are a lot of people with a lot of different things going on in their life at a lot of different stages. But Lord, the beauty of your word and the beauty of the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of us is that you can take one sermon and meet multiple needs. God, bless us, watch over us, help us now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. In Luke, the book of Luke is 24 chapters long. It is 1,151 verses with 19,400 verses. In 82 words. There have been millions of readers who have read the book of Luke down through the century. But the main recipient of the book of Luke was not you and I. The main recipient of the book of Luke was a man named Theophilus. I want you to look at verse number three. Luke says this, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent 
Theophilus. Not much is known about the intended recipient of the third gospel. However, we know that Luke must have desired for Theophilus to hear it from him. He did not want to be left out of the many people along Theophilus' way that had heard about Jesus Christ. I don't know what the relationship was between Luke and Theophilus. The Bible doesn't go into great detail. All it says is, is that he wanted Theophilus to hear this from him. So because of that, he took in hand things that others had said that was most surely believed among them, and he too wanted to be counted with the many voices to tell them, to tell Theophilus about Jesus Christ. Luke wanted to be one more voice in the ear of Theophilus to make sure that Theophilus knew that the things that he had heard about Jesus Christ were true. The truth of the morning is very simple. Please listen to me. Use your influence. Use your voice with people who respect you to confirm Jesus Christ in their life. Don't think that God puts you in that school just to be a student. He puts you there to be a voice. Do not think that God puts you in that neighborhood just to be a neighbor. He puts you there to be a voice. Do not think that God puts you in that family just to be a relative. He puts you there to be a voice. He didn't put you on the job just to be an employee. He put you there to be a voice. And we live in a community of a lot of believers. But I'm afraid in the community of a lot of believers, we don't have a lot of people that use their voice to confirm that Jesus Christ is who Jesus Christ says he is and what the book says Jesus Christ is. There are a lot of voices trying to tear down Jesus Christ. There's a lot of voices trying to make us discount Jesus Christ. There's a lot of voices trying to make Jesus Christ into something that Jesus Christ is not and will never become. You can't take Jesus Christ and fit him into the mold of Hollywood. You have to destroy Hollywood to get to the truth of Jesus Christ. Pastor, be one more voice. Dad, be one more voice. Mom, be one more voice. Teenager, be one more voice. Grandpa, be one more voice. Grandma, be one more voice. Don't sit silently on the sideline and leave it to somebody else to mention his name. You mention his name. Don't leave it to somebody else coming along in their life. You be the person in their life. Your children and your families ought to come home from church and not be wowed by what they heard, but what they hear should have reminded them of what the home has already said. They should hear more about Jesus Christ from you than they should for me. I only have them, and I am only a voice three times a week, four times a week. But can I tell you something? There ought to be a consistent ringing in their ears by the voices that are raising them, and by the voices that are paying for them, by the voices that have to put up with them. Use your voice. Use your voice to talk about Jesus Christ. A lot of people like the product of a church like this, and they love to see the young people well-behaved and well-mannered. But can I tell you something? Behind every well-mannered, well-behaved child, it's not the product of the church. It's the product of a mom and dad who are constantly telling them about Jesus Christ. Do not leave the ears of your young people solely up to the house of God and to the preacher behind the pulpit. Mom and dad, it is your responsibility to be a voice. 24 chapters, 1,151 verses, 19,482 words. Luke became one more voice for Theophilus. One more voice to tell him about John the Baptist. One more voice to tell him about Jesus being born of a virgin. One more voice to tell him that the, that, well, who that babe was lying in the manger. One more voice to tell him about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. One more voice to tell him about Jesus healing the sick. One more voice to tell him about the miracles. One more voice to tell him about the cleansing. One more voice to tell him about the healings and what Jesus was and what Jesus did. Please don't underestimate your voice. If you're a mother, your voice is important. If you're a dad, your voice is important. If you're a Sunday school teacher, your voice is important. If you're a co-worker, your voice is important. Stop letting the liberal agenda in this country make you take a back seat to who lives on the inside of you. You've got Almighty God living on the inside of you. Use your voice. Use your voice. It just may be your voice that truly 
makes the difference. I'm going to give you three things and then I'm done. First of all, I want to tell you this. Your voice should be a result of what Jesus has done in you. Your voice ought to be a result of what Jesus has done in you. Sometimes people complain that we don't have enough workers or we don't have enough people to go out and spread the gospel. Let me tell you something. When you know what Jesus has done in you, you'll have no problem telling other people about Jesus Christ. My confidence in Jesus Christ does not come from what my mom and my dad's faith. It doesn't come from there. It comes from my faith. I was there when he saved me. I was there when he changed my life. I remember the service that I fell underneath conviction. I remember the conferences I were in where God broke my heart and I knew that my life was not my own, that I had to serve Jesus Christ. I knew I needed to change this. I knew I needed to give up that. So every word I use in my voice to my children does not come from what my mom and dad are. It comes from what happened in here. And I am afraid that we are not being transparent with the people we love about what Jesus has done in our lives. Can I ask you a question, Dad? When's the last time you used your voice to tell your children what God has done in your heart? Husband, when's the last time you used your voice to express to your wife, let me tell you how real God is to me. When is the last time brothers and sisters got together and expressed how real God is. I praise the Lord for my siblings. I praise the Lord for my brother. He pastors in North Carolina. I praise the Lord for my two sisters. I get to pastor them. Excuse me. They pastor me. And uh, I don't, you, don't, you don't pastor your sisters. Amen. And uh, that's why every time I go to tell a story, I sort of look back that way. And if they're doing that, I know I got the story wrong. If they're doing that, I know I can go ahead and lie some more. Uh, so... Can I tell you honestly? But I appreciate it when my brother reaches out and sends me a verse and says, Bob, found this verse thinking about you. I love it when my sisters say, Bob, I'm praying for you. I love it when the people I love love me enough to reach out and be a voice in my life. I think we're missing a golden opportunity. And we wonder why our families are not doing and not being what Christ wants them to be. I'm going to tell you why. Because the only time they hear a voice is when they walk through those doors. I'm telling you right now, they ought to get bored with this voice because they've heard it a hundred times before they ever stepped in here. Do you know that you have a golden opportunity to pray with your children every night? You have a golden opportunity to pray with your spouse. You have a golden opportunity to be a voice in those young men's life, in those young ladies' life. Your voice, though, should be connected not to what you have heard about, but what you have experienced in your life. Very interesting. Look at verse number one. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Look at this. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things. Let me tell you, you were there when God spoke to your heart. Use that voice to tell somebody else. Please don't be a silent voice. Dad, your children need to hear you every once in a while say, Amen. Your children, Mama, Need to every once in a while hear you say underneath your voice, "Mm mm-hmm, amen. Well, I remember the first time I said amen sitting next to my mom. When I said amen sitting next to my mom for the very first time, she reached over and patted me on the leg when I was sitting next to her. She said, you sound just like your father. You know what she was saying? Use your voice. Use your voice. Boy, don't stop your children from using their voice to tell others about Jesus Christ. If Christ saved them, they ought to go tell somebody else. Use your voice. Man, don't waste time. Use your voice. I'm going to use my niece Paige this morning in an illustration, and I failed to ask her permission, and I don't know where she's sitting at right now. I'm sitting right back here to my left. Two weeks ago, I was out soul winning, and Miss Kelly and RG weren't able to go, and I think it was two weeks ago, and I was meeting Jordan to visit some teenagers, and Paige was on her bus route, and, and I needed a partner, so I'd say, Paige, come on. And so Paige went with me, my niece, and we, we were driving around, and we got to talking about the Bible. And she asked, and then I, and we got to looking at some scriptures and looking at the Bible. Can I tell you honestly, when I got done 
with that hour with my niece, and when she got out of the car, and I'm driving down the road, you know what I thought? Praise God that I could use my voice to be something that she at least will remember for 20 seconds. <laughs> but you know what? I got a chance to use my voice. But you know why I didn't have to fumble for words? Because he did something in here. And it was easy to say something out there. Second thing I want you to write down. Your voice may be the voice they need to confirm what they've already heard. Your voice may be the voice they need to confirm what they've already heard. Anybody who's raised teenagers at all. And there's many of us that need a shirt that says, I survived my teenager. Many of us. Those of you that don't have teenagers yet and they're small, you need a shirt that says, if this, if the two-year-old stage is what teenage life is going to be like, on the back just say, shoot me now. And, uh, but all of us who have raised teenagers have had our teenagers come home from camp, a conference, young fundamentalist, church, or a good lecture by the principal. We've all had them come in and say, I learned something today. I learned that if I would do everything you would say, we would have no conflict. And as a parent, you're looking at them going, I have tried to tell you that a hundred times. We've had them come in and say, did you know, Dad, that if I don't study and I don't make the grades, you know I'm not getting out of the ninth grade? Son, I have tried to tell you that a hundred times. When did it dawn on you? When my principal told me, you ain't getting out of the ninth grade if you don't pass this exam. Dad, it dawned on me, I better pass. You know what's really crazy is? Our voice as a parent has said it over and over and over and over again. But there was that voice at that time that they listened. You don't know. You don't know at what point your voice is going to be very important to confirm. Parents will love you if you're the right kind of voice. Grandparents are hoping. I have two grandchildren, one on the way. And can I tell you something? I truly, truly am praying for all those workers that Blake right now abuses. I am truly praying for them. I am praying for their first grade teacher, their second grade teacher. I'm praying for everybody that's going to be on their path. Would they please be a voice? Would they please be a voice that tells them and reminds them that living for Jesus Christ is the only way to live? Would they please be a voice? I would hate to think that anybody would have an influence over my grandchildren that was not that right kind of voice. You don't know. Don't be silent. Don't sit on the sideline. You become a voice because there just may be somebody that respects you that one word from you would confirm everything they have ever heard. I remember the couple of voices in my life. I remember at certain times when somebody would say something that I respected very, very much. And that made a difference. The third point I want to write down about one more voice and the fact that Luke, when he was writing to Theophilus, he knew that Theophilus had already heard from everybody else, but he wanted to be one more voice to confirm and instruct and be sure and be certain that he knew that everything he heard was true. But that's very inter this is interesting to me. Are you ready? Your voice this time, listen to me, may give you influence for your voice the second time. Let me say it again. Your voice this time may give you influence for your voice the second time. This was not the only book that Luke wrote to Theophilus. I want you to look, if you will, in Luke chapter 1, in verse number 3. Luke 1, 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Now I want you to go to Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 1. Peter, can I use you? Would that be okay? Come here, Pete. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. Look at it. The former treaties have I made... Oh, what? Theophilus. 
of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. This wasn't the first book. Luke was not the only book that he had written to this man called Theophilus. It was the second book. The first book confirmed who Jesus was. The second book confirmed the acts of the apostles. He not only said, I'm going to confirm who Jesus is, but I need to write you a second letter, and I need to confirm in you how a Christian should act. Can I tell you something? In your life and mine, we better praise God for the people that not only was concerned about our soul, but they were concerned about our life. And Theophilus stepped in the second time and said this, the Lord Jesus Christ has gone to heaven. Now I need to tell you about the acts of the apostles. I need to tell you how they withstood persecution. I need to tell you how they got the gospel to the known world. I need to tell you about the office of deacon. I need to tell you about a pastor. I need to tell you What's going to happen to you in this world? I need you to know what the apostles have gone through to make sure we've gotten the gospel where it needs to be. Please listen to me. Don't discount this. Your voice may be the voice that keeps somebody on the straight and narrow. They are headed down a path. They are clueless of how to live. It's going to take those of us who have walked this path before to be a Luke and to find a Theophilus and say, Hey, I know I told you about Jesus Christ. Now, could I just give you a voice of some wisdom? that you need to act that way. Stop. How many teenagers have turned the tassel at graduation only to find themselves lost with no voice? You know the most dangerous time, and I'm praying for our seniors right now, do you know the most dangerous time for high school seniors is when they turn that tassel, they walk out of that graduation service, and for the next 90 days... They are left to themselves with no voice. And then they get into their 19, then their early 20s. And they have to figure out how to do this by themselves. You listen to me. Don't ever be shy about being a voice of reason for people you love. Don't ever be shy about stepping up to somebody you love and saying, I'm saying this because I love you. I'm not saying this because I hate you. But I cannot, I have to say this. I love you. Can I just talk to you just a second? Because it may be that voice the second time. But you know what? If you have not built a bank account of Jesus, they won't listen to your words about how to live. If you won't take the time, my biggest fear with parents and teenagers is this. They never hear Jesus come out of our mouth and they never hear about God from us as parents until we want them to change their behavior. And then when they start behaving badly, that's when a parent says, well, I thought you were a Christian. Let me tell you something. While they're young, talk to them about Jesus. While they're young, tell them how good God is in your life. While they're young, tie behavior to disappointing Jesus Christ. And you listen to me. When they get older, they'll listen to your voice. One more voice. One more voice. This is Peter Rousseau. Comes from a very fine family. Has great parents great siblings. But I know this about his pastor. I am not the voice in his life. I'm just one more voice in his life. And do you know what makes this young man stand a great chance of turning out for the Lord? It's going to be every voice he hears along the way. And if the Sunday school teacher's voice and the school teacher's voice and everybody's voice is encouraging then he'll make it. Thank you, Peter. Can I ask you a question as I close? How's your voice today? When's the last time that you spiritually had a spiritual conversation of encouragement? He said, well, pastor, I'm just not that kind of person. When's the last time you said, God bless you, I'm praying for you? When's the last time you said, hey, I love you, my brother. I'm praying for you. Hey, read this verse. I think it'll help you. 
And I think that we are holding back. Oh, don't hold back. Dad, listen to me. Your kids need to hear that voice. Don't sit silent. Don't, don't sit there like you have no respect. Any, no, 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 your dad, use your voice. Let him hear about the Lord. Let your wife hear it. Let your kids have it. hear it. One more voice. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask for your help.